Before I talk about the actual movie, I have to talk about one of the most unnecessary nudity scenes that I think I've ever seen, ever. Um, there's a lot of unnecessary scenes in horror movies or movies in general where, oh look, this girl's got her boobs out. And I personally think this is one of the ones with the most unnecessary one. So what happens is... Um, this girl discovers a dead body. She passes out from fucking fear. When she wakes up, she sees it again. And she runs and runs and runs away. And now she's undressing to change into a different outfit. And it's a revealing outfit, too. Which, nothing wrong with that. Um, but you fucking know why the director is doing this shit. She was running away in fear because she just saw a dead body... She closes the door and now she's undressing. Why is she doing this? And then she gets killed a little bit after. It's so weird. No. The actual movie starts off with, um, I guess it's supposed to be the past. So they have like this weird blue filter on the movie. The lighting's just really odd. Honestly, that scene doesn't even really matter. It establishes something that we figure out later in the movie. But that's it. Um, these, these group of college kids that want to celebrate before they graduate or some shit like that and have a party. Usually they would have the house till the weekend, but this professor, um, closes it before the weekend. She closes it every year on June 21st, but they want to stay. They figure they can get away with it. They don't. She walks in on them drinking and tells them they have till tomorrow to leave. And, you know, they, they still decide to have the party anyway. Everything's going fine. Vicky shows up late with her boyfriend. She has sex with him on a waterbed. Um, the professor breaks her waterbed while she's on it or whatever. And now they want revenge, even though it only really happened to one of them. They say she's mean and deserves it, but we've never seen her be really that mean before. Um... She owns the building, after all. She has the right to kick them out. They do have a throwaway line where they say that legally they're allowed to stay there or something, but it doesn't really amount to anything. Um, so they decide to play a prank on her. She, um, the girl that was having sex with her boyfriend, um, takes her boyfriend's gun, and she's gonna, um, you know... Trick the girl into thinking that she's going to shoot her. So she makes her go into this dirty pool that um, the professor pre refuses to clean because nobody uses it. And um, she shoots a, a lamp to make sure she's serious. She supposedly shoots her one friend in the ankle and we see blood and stuff. They don't explain how the prank worked. Um, this is an 80s movie. And all she had was like a pistol or a handgun. I don't know what kind of gun. But I don't know how she would have done that. They should have explained how the prank worked. But they didn't. Because you know what happens after. You know eventually she realizes it's just a prank. Nothing really bad's going to happen. But she's pissed for obvious reasons. And she swings the cane at Vicky. And hits her with it. And then she accidentally gets shot in the gut and falls in the pool and dies. And then they tie her up in towels and put her in the water because they were scared to all go to jail or something. Some of them wanted to turn themselves in, but they don't. Um, they still have the party. I I get it. It would be kind of stupid if they just killed the person that was preventing them from having the party and then not having the party. Plus, you know, plot reasons. But I can't believe having a party after you, you just killed somebody. Some of them, they do show that they're clearly uncomfortable and don't even really want to party. But still, man. Vicky's boyfriend for shows up one last scene, then disappears from the movie. And apparently he knew about the prank, even though he wasn't there for when it happened. He wasn't told about it or anything. Once again, it's an 80s movie, so they don't have cell phones. But apparently he knows about it, so... He asks how the prank went, and she says it went fine, and he disappears from the movie. We never see him again. He doesn't get killed, nothing. I, I, I guess he was literally only here because women aren't allowed to have guns or some shit. I guarantee that was the thinking. 
Women can own guns, but... You know, no, I guess it just had to be Vicky got his gun. And that's how this movie works. It's such a weird thing. So he disappears. He doesn't get killed, which is very weird. They frame it as if it's the girl they killed somehow still alive, even though they shot her in the gut, wrapped her in towels, and put her in the water. Um, which isn't very believable. It's not like this killer's Jason Voorhees or something. And, um... She starts killing all the people, you know, that did that to her. Besides one guy. She kills this one random dude. Most of the time the kills aren't very graphic or really shown on screen. And she most of the time just uses the fucking cane. She uses arrows at one point, but they... It looks like she just, like, puts them in. But she's on the roof. So she must be, like, throwing it or something. It, did, it didn't sound like she was using a bow and arrow. It just sounded like she only had the arrows. It was weird. Not not a very cool kill. And there was also something that didn't make sense in that scene. The girl gets out of the car. She starts smoking. She chose to get out of the car by herself. She didn't do the typical horror movie shit where she heard a noise. So she goes outside to investigate. Doesn't see anything. So she gets back in the car. No, she literally just got out of the car. But she ends up hearing a noise, call, um, calls to see if anybody's there, and then she gets back in the car and just starts smoking in the car and chilling. She doesn't look scared or anything. She doesn't say anything. She just gets back in the car. Why? You were outside of the car. You chose to do that. Why? Are, I don't know. That thing bugged me. It's not like she had a reason to go back in when she chose to go out. It's It was just kind of stupid. The big plot twist, because they had tried to make you think it was her by, um, earlier in the movie, they said that if something traumatic happened to her, that, um, she would become violent. So they tried to make you think it was her, but in reality, it was actually her son that has been living in her attic. Um, another character, we don't really see what gets to happen to him either, because the movie ends, but her boyfriend... Another character's boyfriend gets tranquilized, and then we never see him again. They say he's going to be fine, but we never see him again. He never reappears and gets killed or anything. So, okay. And they made it the most unbelievable that it wasn't her, because she was a really old lady. She had to use a cane, white hair. She was old, right? And then one of the scenes, one of the, one of the people is getting killed. She is sprinting for her life, and she goes in the bathroom, and she's in there within seconds. That is not no old lady doing it. So I knew there was like something up with it. I didn't guess it being her son though. Um, it was it was very odd. I did like the ending. I did like some things about it. It was a pretty unique horror movie. She ends up stabbing the killer a few times. He falls down the attic. You think she's safe. His eyes open and the movie just ends. Leaving you wanting more. So you never know if she survived and her boyfriend survived. It just ended. Very weird way to end it though. <laughs>